Let us see how the archegonia develops on the archegoniophore. The, there are uh, 8 to 9 lobes on the archegoniophore and the tip of each lobe contains a growing region. From where? From the cells of this growing region the archegonia develops. One of the superficial cells very close to the growing region identifies itself as an archegonial initial or we can identify it as an archegonial initial. This archegonial initial is different from the other cells in the sense that this is bigger than the other cells and has dense cytoplasm. This single cell divides to form the complete archegonia which has a venter, a neck, inside the neck, neck canal cells, cover cells, venter canal cell and egg cell are situated. That whole thing develops from a single superficial cell very close to the growing tip of the lobe. This individual cell or this cell, I am going to draw it here. This is identified as an archegonial initial. This archegonial initial first divides by a transverse wall resulting in the formation of two cells. The upper cell is called as the primary archegonial cell. This is the primary archegonial cell and the lower cell is called as the primary stock cell. The primary stock cell divides a number of times and forms a multicellular stock which gets embedded inside the tissue of the archegoniophore. So this cell will divide a number of times and it develops a multicellular stock which will go deeper into the tissue of the archegoniophore. Whereas the primary archegonial initial or the primary archegonial cell, this cell will divide by three successive oblique vertical intersecting walls. The three walls which are oblique intersecting with one another. This results in the formation of a central cell and three peripheral cells. This is the central cell which is called as the axial cell, central axial cell and this is, these three are the peripheral cells. The central cell will divide to form the neck canal cells, the venter canal cell, the cover cells and the egg. Whereas the peripheral cells will divide to form of the wall of the neck and the wall of the venter. So we will first see how the peripheral cells divide to develop a venter wall and a neck wall. The three peripheral cells divide anticlinally. They divide anticlinally once as a result of which six cells are formed. All the six cells all the six cells will divide transversely and because of this transverse division 12 cells will be formed. Of the 12 cells, 6 are arranged in upper tire or the 12 cells are arranged in two tires. The upper tire containing 6 cells and the lower tire containing the 6 cells. The six cells of the upper tire will develop into the neck and the six cells of the lower tire will develop into the wall of the venter. The six cells of the lower tire divide by a number of divisions and form the wall of the swollen venter. Initially the venter wall is single layered but later the venter wall may become two layered. Then the upper six cells, one, two, three, four, five, six, six cells, each cell will divide transversely and develop into a neck. The neck has four to eight cells in its height or the neck is four to eight cells in its height 
and it has six cells in the circumference that is if we see the circumference it is made up of six cells whereas the height of the neck is around four to eight cells depending on the species simultaneously the division also takes place in the central axial cell the central axial cell first divides by a transverse wall resulting in the formation of an upper cell and a central cell or the lower cell the upper cell is called as the primary cover cell or it is called as the cover initial this cover initial the cover initial will divide twice vertically twice resulting in the formation of four cells that means the two divisions are vertical the first division the second division is at right angles to the first division which results in the formation of four cells these four cells occupy the tip of the neck forming the four cover cells of the neck the lower one divides again to form two cells the central cell is called as the neck canal initial and the lower cell is called as the venter canal initial the neck canal initial divides transversely a number of times and forms 6 to 8 neck canal cells which are seen in the neck region these are the neck canal cells you can call them as the neck canal cells and the venter canal initial the lowermost cell the venter canal initial divides unequally forming a smaller cell and a larger cell the smaller cell is called as the venter canal cell and the larger cell is called as the egg cell this is the egg cell and this is the venter canal cell at maturity the archegonia um, is now ready for fertilization so at maturity the venter canal cell and all the neck canal cells disintegrate and they form a mucilaginous substance i'll write here this is the archegonia which at maturity only the egg cell remains the remaining 